Have you ever looked at the wheels on your bike and wondered, how the heck do they get those spokes in there? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to lace a bicycle wheel. Okay, let's start from the beginning. I've got a hub, I've got a rim, some spokes which are already cut to the right length, and baggy of nipples, and a Russell Makes nipple tray. I'll tell you all about this in just a minute. All right, so my spoke calculator calculated two different lengths of spokes. Some are longer, some are shorter. These are the long ones. I always put the long ones on the left, short ones on the right. Long left, it's easy to remember. Now my spoke length calculator told me that the long spokes are gonna go on the right side of the hub, which is this side. The disc mount is always on the left side. So I'm gonna start with my long spokes and I'm gonna start on the right flange of the hub, which is this one. Now here's a detail. If you're a professional wheel builder, you want the wheel to end up so that when you're looking through the valve hole, which is right here, you look through that valve hole, you can see the logo of the hub. It's a, it's a small detail, but it looks real pro, and if you know what to look for and you see a hub and that's, that's off, uh, you know, the wheel builder was kind of a joke, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. okay. so How do we make that happen? That's kind of complicated, right? Because the spokes are coming out of here at crazy angles. And, and I mean, how would you make that happen? So here's a quick trick. You sight down the flange right here. And when I do this, I can see that there's a spoke hole that's to the left of the logo and a spoke hole that's to the right of the logo. So I'm going to start on the hole to the left of the logo. And this is going to be a three cross lacing pattern. And so I'm going to start on that hole and I'm going to count one, two, three over to the left and put it into that hole. Okay, so now that I have the lead spoke in, I'm going to take long spokes and I'm going to put them in every other hole on this flange. And don't lose track of that lead spoke. That's right here. All right, here's the next pro tip. On a lot of rims, and Velocity in particular, you've got the Velocity logo or the manufacturer logo on one side and the model logo on the other side. The way I was always taught is you put the Velocity logo or the manufacturer logo on the drive side, so the right side, and the model logo on the left side. So because the disc flange is on the left side, this is on the right side, so this side we want to be on the side with the Velocity logo. I'm looking at the valve hole and I can see that the spoke holes are drilled at different angles. Okay, you can kind of see here that this spoke hole is lower than that spoke hole and what that means is the drill bit was coming through here down at it from an angle like this and drilling upward and this drill bit was at an angle like that and drilling downward. So what that means is you want this spoke that's coming out of this spoke hole to go up to this side of the hub and the spoke that's coming out of this spoke hole to go down to the opposite side of the hub. So here's what that means. I have a spoke hole that's angled up here and a spoke hole that's angled down and I'm dealing with spokes coming out of this flange that's more toward the top. So I'm gonna take this spoke and I'm gonna go next to the valve hole, just to the left of the valve hole from your perspective, and put that in there. And then I'm gonna put a nipple on here. Okay, now I've got the nipple just started on there. You don't wanna screw it all the way on, you just wanna get it started on the, on the spoke there. So this is the way I would normally hold this. All right, so I've got the rim in my lap. I've got it resting on the edge of the table. I'm gonna grab the next spoke to the right on the hub, and I'm going to count four spoke holes over to the right on the rim. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna put it in that fourth spoke hole. Grab another nipple, and just barely get it started. I'm gonna go all the way around the rim. Doing the same thing.
Okay, now I have all the spokes that I've put into the hub into every fourth hole on the rim. And it looks symmetrical. I know I did it right. There's nothing, there's no two that are closer together and two that are farther apart or anything like that. They're all equally spaced. I'm looking at this. Job well done. Next step, I'm gonna flip it over. Now I'm working with the other side of the hub. So now I'm gonna be using my short spokes. I'm gonna grab about half my short spokes. I've got the spoke that's just to the right of the valve hole here. And I'm, I'm aiming for this hole next because after I put these spokes into this side of the flange, I'm gonna clock the hub like this. And I want these spokes that I'm about to put in to go in the same rotational direction as the spokes I've already put in. And I'm gonna want an opening in the spokes at the valve hole here. So, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sight down the hub and I can see that the spoke holes are offset. So the spoke holes on this flange are not in line with the spoke holes on this flange. So since I wanna to go to the right of the spoke that's already in here, I'm, I wanna to go to the hole in the flange that's to the right of the hole that's in the flange that already has the spoke in it. So I've got my shorter spokes in hand and I'm just gonna put that one in there and then I'm gonna go around every other hole again and load up the rest of this flange. So now I've got this flange loaded up. I'm gonna grab one of these and I'm gonna go just next to, just to the right, just like we planned of the spoke that's already in there. I'm gonna grab a nipple and just start it on there. And go around the rest of the hub and we'll do this over and over again. All right, so now I've got half the spokes in the wheel. Still pretty floppy, but I can turn the hub one direction. I'm turning it clockwise in relation to me so that uh, the spoke that's just next to the valve hole here is nice and uh, straight. I don't want, what I don't want, if I were to turn it the other way, you see how this spoke is kind of crossing over the valve hole? If I were to lace it this way, this spoke would cross the other way over the valve hole and then your valve's sticking out right here and it's harder to get your air chuck on there because the spokes are crossing in front of the valve. So I want the space where the valve is to be nice and open so I've got a lot of space for the air chuck to go and you'll, you'll be able to see that more clearly in just a minute. So let's load spokes back in this small flange. So I'm gonna move back to my long spokes and this time, rather than sticking them in from this side, I'm gonna stick them in from this side. So every other spoke that's coming out of the hub, one is gonna be coming out on the inside of the flange and the other one's gonna be coming out on the outside of the flange. All right, so I'm gonna grab the hub, I'm gonna rotate it. If I let go, it's just gonna straighten out. So I'm gonna keep it rotated like that. I'm gonna flip the wheel around and I'm gonna grab one of these spokes and this is a three cross lacing pattern. So that means these spokes that are going in a clockwise rotational angle off of the hub flange, I want this one, which is coming out of the hub on the, on the opposite side of the flange, I want this one to go in the opposite direction and cross over three of the spokes on the same flange that are going the opposite way. So one, two, three. And on this last spoke, I wanna go underneath it. That adds a lot of strength to the wheel. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a little jag here. I'm just, I'm kinda bending the spoke with my fingers and I'm trying not to scratch the rim. <laughs> As I pass it past the rim, I go underneath this spoke and then up and I go to the spoke hole. Now we've got a little bit of a problem because this is a double wall rim, which means there's an inner cavity. You can see this is where the tube would lay or the tubeless tape if you're doing a tubeless setup. Uh, I need to get a nipple on the end of this spoke, but if I just grab it with my fingers, I can't get my fingers in there because my fingers can't get in through this hole. So I need a tool that's gonna hold the nipple 
and help me thread it onto the end of the spoke. And that's where the poker and the nipple tray comes in. I can just grab the poker, pick up one of these nipples, stick it into the hole, line it up to the spoke, give it a couple little twists, pull the poker out, voila. Oh, yeah. So now I'm just gonna go around the rest of the wheel. This tool makes it so much easier to do this. All right, now we've got this side of the wheel complete. Everything looks symmetrical. I think we did it right. Uh, <laughs> now let's flip the wheel over and we're gonna do the same thing to the opposite side. So I'm gonna grab my short spokes, the only ones that are left, and put them in the opposite side of the hub. And you're just filling the holes that are left. There's, this is the easiest part. Take this spoke and I'm gonna cross it over. So you've got one, two, three. So this spoke is gonna cross over one, two, three, and on the third one, it's gonna bend underneath of its partner, and then it's gonna to go to that hole right there. And I'm gonna use my poker to pick up a nip and get it started on the spoke. And again, and again, and again. All right, this is looking pretty good. Everything looks symmetrical. Let's check our logo alignment through the valve hole. Oh yeah, that's looking good. This is the drive side of the hub. We've got our velocity logo. This is the non-drive side, the disc brake side of the hub. We've got our Blunt SS logo. Um, uh, here's where the valve hole is. You can see how these two spokes right here are parallel to one another, leaving this big opening. So it's gonna be easy for me to get an air chuck onto this valve. Uh, that's a nice, properly laced wheel. Pretty happy with that. Next step is to build it, tighten the spokes up, true the wheel, and we're gonna cover that in a later video, but that's gonna be it for today. Thanks for watching. If you're watching this and you think, hey, I gotta get myself one of them nipple trays and pokers, I don't blame you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Check out my website, russellmakes.com slash store. Link is in the description. You can buy one of these. I offer them in anodized black, as you see here, and raw aluminum. Everything is CNC machined from aluminum by myself. Thanks for watching. I hope there's some useful info in here. You know, this isn't rocket surgery. It's just, it's just patterns. You gotta do it over and over again. You can get good at it. Oh, yeah.